What's up, everybody? Back again, episode number 17 of the All for One Golf Podcast. We've got Brian the Hurricane McCurdy. What's up, everybody? We survived. Still- it's it's been a it's been a wild adventure, but we're still here. He's still with us. His roof is his entire house is still intact, so yep. he's not looking like Tropicana Field. No, oof, boy, that was. But what a way to you know tell the city, hey, we need new ballpark. But uh, that's it was kind of funny because my wife mentioned that she's like Tropicana Field got destroyed and the roof got ripped off, and I go, I go, I think the owner. That's an improvement, probably, right? They're kind of honestly kind of happy about that because they've been fighting to get that um baseball to get a new baseball stadium there for forever and honestly that that is the worst like sterile antiseptic boring bad place to watch a baseball game it just it, it just has no you know like you go to Camden Yards or Fenway or Wrigley and there's just that feeling of baseball. It just don't get feels like an it feels like an empty convention center. Like it is just the worst place to watch a baseball game. So um Milton has done at least one good thing. Yeah, potent potentially. Yeah. I mean, uh, all all joking aside, that that Tampa Gulf Coast area and Polk County in the area is kind of inwards of that got absolutely hammered by that storm um we lost we lost power wednesday night at 8 p.m and it was out until sunday night at about six which is the shortest turnaround that we've ever had for getting the power back on but then it came on for 24 hours it went off overnight then we had it on for about 24 hours and then it went off again today. So we've, 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 uh, maybe finally the lights are on and we're hoping that they stay on because I've lived in Florida for the vast majority of my life. And those were the strongest winds that I've ever been a part of. Ponce Inlet, which is about 12 miles south of our house, had wind gusts at like 98 miles per hour. It was that's it. Yeah. It was an intense wild ride for a bunch of hours i mean it just you could house was just shaken my wife's beloved zombie tree finally fell down oh no yeah so that was kind of a i still want to experience it once just to see what it's like it's you know it's it's the power and intensity is pretty amazing to watch as long as you think like okay if, if you could look into a magic eight ball and you'd go like it's pretty amazing to watch the wind blow that hard and the sound that it produces and everything like that. But it is just, it's after... just funny that like something like that can be so powerful because wind is literally nothing. You can't see it. It just, it's wind, you know, it's a thing that right. exists and it can take your roof off. I mean, Oof. it's insane. Took a roof, took a roof off of somebody in our neighborhood's house. Just a flat roof. Just peeled it right back yeah. off. At least the, with a tornado, cream, you can the see ice the cream spot. Thing. The ice cream spot that you and Benji were going to wager over. No, got ripped. Yep. No, it's still there got, though, right? They're yeah. Well, back? I don't know how long there. That's. It might be a while before they open back up. Well, I'm going to be a while yeah, before I mean, I'm over there anyway. So yeah, I mean, we're still 150 miles from where that thing hit, and it's it was. It's no fun, man. They are rough exhausting weeks but the nice thing is it's, it's ushered in fall and we we were like in the mid 60s today so super duper comfortable and uh all the uh our guest today all the people that he played golf with during the summer will be in my backyard and i'll get to play golf with all the people from ontario for the next four and a half five months yeah t- tell them we said hi yes Fellow Canadian who's stuck in the snow for the entire winter. Yeah. Huh. And uh, so, um, I'm Sean Painter, by the way. I do not survive hurricanes over here. Just cold weather. That's it. Yeah. I think it's funny because, you know, like I've gone through eight or ten hurricanes in the time that I've lived here in Florida. And it's when you talk to like you or I talked to, you know, Billy a bunch this week. He's been checking in on me. 
And uh, they're like, oh, I could never deal with a hurricane. And I'm like, I never would want to deal with a blizzard. I mean, I think that blizzards are so much more frequent and encumbrancing than than a hurricane in a lot of ways. Now, I've never completely lost my house or anything like that to a hurricane. But it's funny what we're it's funny what we get used to. Um, yeah, I can't say from where I live, I get, we don't get blizzards either. We just get, no, you just get cold, right? You don't, we just get, I mean, you get, you get a lot of snow, but you don't get a ridiculous amount of snow, right? We don't really get a lot of snow either. Um, which is really a desert. You're kind of like a desert plain almost, aren't you? Yeah. We're kind of in a weird area. So like Calgary would get a lot of snow because they're right next to the mountains. So like they would get a lot of snow because there's a lot of moisture in the air down there. We're very dry up here. So it doesn't snow a ton. Like you'll get your one or two dumps a year where it'll snow maybe, you know, a couple inches. But, you know, maybe like in one night, that's like the most I've ever seen, like maybe half a foot. Okay. Um, Just enough to get the snow plows out. But otherwise, like it snows once or twice a year and then it just stays. And then it's just really freakishly cold. Yeah. But like usually November, December are warmer during the days. Like it'll still get around zero. So like a lot of the snow will just melt. And the nice thing is, is like there's not too many positives for the city, but fantastic drainage. We don't flood anywhere. Yeah. You know, we, so we got 18 inches of rain from Milton. Yeah. That'll properly, uh, yeah. Green there up was your, a lot your fairways. Of areas. Yeah. Inland, the rough. I finally get to play a little bit of, I snuck out and played like a couple of holes of golf today. And the Bermuda rough is shaggy and thick right now at the, uh, at the par three course. I mean, just really thick, but yeah, the inland, the inland areas where we live on the beach side is, is kind of real crested. So we don't really flood here on the beach, but the inland areas got some massive flooding. Like we totally know a couple of a couple people's houses who got a significant amount of water in them. So well, it's rough. Um, How was your round of golf this weekend? I was good. I'm sad it's over, but you know, we've got four more rounds left in the year. Nice. I'm excited for those, but I'm very sad because like I've kind of stumbled upon some new happenings with the golf swing and I, I found fairways all day. You know, I hit my irons really well. I didn't, you know, I, it was just a nice casual round of golf. It was great. Good. You think you had brought in a different mental perspective into it as it kind of was the last round of the year? Or did you think no. you put more pressure on it or less pressure on it because of it? Or No. I go into every round of golf the same way. But like, you know how like I record the videos, right? And I was like, yep. damn, damn, I look quick. Because like I was comparing myself to uh, American Sean. And he's got a really okay. slow, he's got a really slow swing. And I'm like, maybe I should try doing that more. And just really slowing it down. And I've discovered, I think I've di- I've landed in the town of Tempo. Ooh. And it's a fun nice. town to be in. Yeah. Population, I, population two. I didn't, uh, I didn't record the round because it was just, you know, casual round with me and my, with my friend. But um, I wish I did because I, I wish I wish uh could see how that swing looked because it felt good all day. Yeah. I definitely noticed with myself too. And I don't even know that it feels like it, they feel drastically slower, but like when I don't try to hammer the golf ball is when it just absolutely gets nuked. Yeah. Like I was yeah. hitting some four irons, you know, prior to the hurricane at the driving range. And these are my 81 Titleist blades. I mean, I was, I was 225 on the carry, which is like a five iron just absolutely hammering the golf ball and not feeling like I was swinging very hard at all. And it was just yeah. like Xerox machine. That was like control C control C control C one after another, after another, after another felt, felt pretty awesome. It's a nice feeling. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited to play with you. I hope, I just hope that like we do, we do justice as yeah. to how we're talking well, about I how our games are going. Of us, I think I'm, it's going to be, I've, I've gotten drastically better about 
when I play with other people or when other people used to let me play through, I would always choke on a golf <laughs> hole. And just, I've, I finally worked past that because I used to always think like, I'd, you know, like, oh, you projected this image that you're this really amazing golfer. Like you better follow through with it. And then inevitably that self-doubt would set in and then I would like shank something or do something stupid and then I'd get angry at myself and then like massively downhill fast. But I've, I've definitely worked through that and hit, um, there was three ladies today who were playing. You hit three ladies? No, I hit on three ladies though. (laughs) (laughs) Good for Um, you. Good for you. Um, they let me through and, you know, talk to him for a few minutes about the weather and everything like that. Took some pictures for him and just hit a phenomenal wedge to about eight feet. And they were just like, that's so fun to, to watch people. He sees people's reactions when you hit a shot like that. Cause inevitably I'm always thinking like, you're going to shank this. These people think you're good and you're going to just, you're going to do something so incredibly stupid and, and hit, those three ladies, you know, like pinball style, but didn't happen. Also, I've been putting really great too. I've been paying attention to like pro pros who putt versus amateurs and myself. And if you watch just such a long, silky one piece putting stroke on the pros. And then if you watch us putt, so, so, hanky and jaggered just no no tempo in putting so i've really been focusing on that and that was the thing that lawson kind of drilled into me a couple weeks ago when he yelled at the yelled at me on the putting green and it's working it's stuck like i i didn't make a lot of putts today but i hit I, i i missed a lot of stuff on the high side but i hit really well struck putts so, as long as you're two putts or less, I mean, like you're not going to sink every putt you, you hit as long as you're, you know, within a couple yeah. inches of the hole. I mean, that's a success in my book. Yeah. Yeah. But just happy the way with, you know, they, there are putts that didn't find the bottom of the cup, but they felt like putts that I really made and was happy with all of the effort that went behind them instead of kind of going like, Oh damn, I missed that birdie. I didn't make that birdie putt. I'm like, I made that putt. I did everything I was supposed to do. And I'd rather miss something on the high side and feel like it had a chance than hit a putt a foot and a half short that never gets there or misses way underneath. So I'm happy with the way, that I'm putting, but that has just been a focus of trying to like, we got to really hammer that. in the putting for finers because those, that place is going to eat us alive. I think. <clears throat> yeah. That's, I think that's the thing that I don't know. That scares me the most, but yeah, hitting, hitting those greens and having the ball stick and then not getting so gun shy when you get on those putting greens and they feel like lightning. Yeah. Like I'm not worried about, I don't think losing golf balls is going to be a big thing because it yeah. seems to be a pretty wide open, Oop. you know, I, I don't want to say a fair course, but you know, like you'll find it if you're a little wayward, however, hitting those greens and sticking with them and then trying not to like trying to hit the hole and not have it roll off the edge of the green. Yeah. If that, that happens. <laughs> That's what I'm scared for is, you know, hitting a putt and then it, watching it go 40 yards down the fairway. Yeah. Hey, resend that to, um, to Alex. He didn't get it. I can do that. Well, I'm glad you're okay from the hurricanes though. Yeah, it was, man, it's just, it's exhausting. Cause it's, it's, it's one of those things where like the hurricane itself is probably like 12, 14 hours of like active, active, really bad weather from about six o'clock on Wednesday evening till about 8 a.m. Thursday morning. But you've got four or five days of lead up 
prior to it where you're like stressed by the whole situation and then we're almost at a week we're at six days six days now yeah six days to get to the back to the uh, back end of the recovery so i am just so thankful that it's finally over and without no further further ado and hurricane ramblings we've got alex archer on this evening with us with a wonderful and nobody can see it but the um our, the 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 most classic of all random golf club attire the it's random collection sweat uh, sweater mm. yeah i got i think i got the full uh i got the hat if they had underwear i'd have it too so nice mm. i got the white underwear? shirt and the black shirt and um I think that's it. I just had the the shirt. I bought somebody um, earlier this year. One of one of the one of our giveaways was the towel, and I think that was the thing that that um, Theo was the most stoked about in that set as well. Awesome! Yeah, no, cool. it's uh, it's one of my favorites. My wife's favorite too. We got her some stuff for her uh, her starter bag. Nice. That's a well. Good this idea. is this is, is another there a thing on the back. Yeah, it's the same logo. logo. Okay, I'll flip just... around for you. Nobody else, though. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> that one. That one is. That one is a classic. That one is a classic. So this is a. Uh, this is a big episode for for Sean here tonight. This is the first time that I am outnumbered as the American. It's it's two on one Canadian this evening. So Alex is from Ontario, correct? Yeah. Yeah. About an hour west of Toronto, Kitchener Waterloo. I think we're we're really gunning for that number one Canadian golf podcast, right? That's exactly right. I gotta if check I the numbers it, on that. If I've said it once, I've said it twelve times. Canada is my second favorite country in the world, and my number one intention is to be the number one uh, number one podcast in Canada. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, I'll do my well part. On our way. Nice. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Alex. Just some uh, how you how you kind of got into the game and. Just give up, give everybody the four one one about Alex. Yeah, Alex is a golfer. Um, so about twenty years ago, a young kid, uh, I was lucky. My actually, some someone's parents when I was growing up. I don't know if we were ten, eleven, twelve. I never actually asked what the actual year was, but uh, one of my friend's parents decided it was way cheaper to just get us junior golf memberships and drop us off Monday to Friday mm-hmm. at the golf course and let the let the pro uh, take care of us every single day than putting us in uh, summer camp or anything like that. So I think it was like three, 400 bucks for a junior membership. So um, for two summers in a row, we used to just get dropped off Monday to Friday and picked up play as a 27 hole course. So we play 27 holes every day, spend a couple hours in the gully collecting probably ones and uh, eating chicken fingers for lunch and putting for uh you know, ball competitions around the little putting green. They had one of those big circular ones with a, a tree in the middle. So that was called Kleinberg Golf Club. It doesn't exist anymore. But um, so just grew up. That was like our, where we were taken care of. Um, once a week, we get a little lesson. So got to learn golf um, through these junior lessons at, at uh, that membership. And then from there, you – you transitioned to being a cart boy. So did the little back shop job at that club for a year and then worked at a nice, uh, it was a public course, but a really nice public course called Copper Creek in Kleinberg as well for a couple of years as well. And uh, yeah, I just was surrounded by golf until I went off to school. I think like most college, college for you, university for us students, uh, we, um, you kind of drop off in the game. So it was about five, six years game kind of, uh, went to the wayside and then a um, year or two before COVID I had stopped traveling as much for work and I just, just kind of fell back in love with it. Um, I started to have a different relationship with golf actually before RGC. And I think kind of, re- I think why I resonate with things that, you know, the relationship you're having with golf and stuff you're, you're talking about Brian in your, in your book, but um, yeah, it's more like a meditative relaxation thing for me it's it, it's an escape i i would probably say i play 60 70 percent of my golf by myself i just go out to the par three and it's, it's just an opportunity to like relax and escape um and then i love doing the be the solo golfer that gets paired with people i have a few 
lifelong friends now because of that. And then obviously it's a good reason to just catch up with buddies. So relationships kind of golf changed throughout the years, which I think happens with multiple people, but um, that's kind of been the journey of golf for me, I would say over the last 20 plus years. So that's my, uh, how I really got into it is I had a friend in, I think he was in middle school and his dad is golf course called winter park pines in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And my dad took me out one time and just like fell in love with it. And then come to find out and they still do it to this day. It was like $70 to play all summer as a junior when school was out after 10 a.m. So nice. that's what I did for like four summers. My, my dad or mom would like take me to the golf course, drop me off. Here's like $4 for hot dogs and sodas. And then I would, they'd be like, you want me to come get you at five? And I'm like, no, there's still like three more hours of light. I'm like, come get me at like eight to eight. Yeah. And just did that all day, every day for as many summers as I could. And just absolutely. And to, I am to this date, you know, Winter Park Pines is not particularly the most amazing golf course on the planet, but it's, it's, it's my favorite. It's my favorite place. And like, if I only had one more round of golf to ever play again, like I would want to go back and play there, even though I've played that golf course to death, a thousand, like a thousand times over. Yeah. But what do you think? What do you, as, as being that formative time in your life, how do you, do you see what you learned as, as a young kid? What did, what did you take out of that? That's been useful as you've, grown into an adult and into like a professional career yeah yeah i've always played sports and i I think um like competition's always been a thing but when we were chipping around that putting green and playing on the course like nobody was particularly good and half of it was luck and i think it was that like friendly competition um it's a good question i never really thought about it before but jump right to my mind because you know you you win two and then you lose one in the end, pretty much everyone comes home with the same amount. Like, you know, one day somebody comes home with five balls, but you, you kind of feel the the vibe of your friend and you kind of throw them some or put a little extra double or nothing until it, until it becomes even or whatever it needs to be. So I think it was just that, like that act of competing, but ultimately in the end, it's just like, you care about your friend and you don't want anyone to go home feeling crummy. Um, Right. And now I've actually played a $5 game, a friend of mine, and we'll probably talk about him later, but he's the one who got me into RDC. We play a $5 game where you can bet five bucks on anything on the golf course. And it's the same concept. Like we bring a hundred dollars. You can only bet fives. So I can bet on anything. Five bucks closest to green, $5. I'm, I'm going to hit a fairway. You can take the bet or not. You don't have to, but everything is like good fun, $5. And at the end of the day, it always works. You could get up 50 and by the end you're, you're walking home with five bucks or even you're always like, you end up making ridiculous pets. I'm going to make a 20 foot putt uh, just to get your friend their money's back. So it's like, I kind of the same child uh, that I was before, but instead of pro V ones, which are now actually six bucks. So maybe I should, maybe I should go for pro V ones. Um, I'm doing $5 bills. So, yeah. Well, and that's like life doesn't have to be a zero sum game where I need to win everything for the sake of me winning instead of kind of going like, hey, it's kind of cool if everybody wins, because when everybody wins, it's a lot more fun. There's this line in an episode of Bluey where he talks about like, uh, I don't ever seen Bluey before. I don't know. It's the greatest uh, cartoon show ever. We were just watching some 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 shorts of, okay. of of it before we came in, but there's one where like Bluey's playing with his sister Bingo, and you know she's not playing by the rules, and and her mom goes like, "You you need to decide whether or not you want to be right or you want to keep playing the game." Mm-hmm. And yeah. like when you when it's just like me me me, I want to win, I want to win, I want to win. You end up just like maybe that friend maybe that friend goes, you know what? he hosed me maybe it never was fun maybe it was just a way for me to get some money out of this person and realizing like okay hey here's how i can continue to learn and play because that's that's the thing that i think about from all my time like playing junior golf was was building those relationships with the friends when you were just completely unsupervised because it was like 
you know, there's probably like 65 or 70 kids who signed up for that program, but there was like 15 of us that were there every day. And it was like, you had to, you, you knew, like if you did something stupid or mean or aggressive to somebody else, like you were going to see that person again the next day. And you had to figure yeah. out how to like work through that jungle of kingdom of kid dumb to make sure that like you weren't going to get, you know, shanked in the back by somebody's revenge golf ball the next day. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun when everyone wins in the end. Right. Right. Cause we all want to come back and play next weekend or whatever yeah. it is. When you're talking about that reminds me, I got to, I'll shout out a, a buddy, but it, that, uh, that me, 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 it's, it's like the friend who keeps a good handicap, but never gives out strokes because they just want to win. Right. I got a I got a buddy, Justin calling you out who does that. <laughs> <laughs> he owes me four strokes, but he won't give them to me. Sounds Which like you're going to match a Bruin. Yeah. <laughs> this is your call out. I'll come yeah. film it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Challenge, challenge yourself. The other thing that I think about all the time too is it made me really comfortable talking and interacting with a larger variety of, of people. And when, because like a lot of times we play with kids, and most of the time it was an 85%, 90%, we play with like another group of kids. But sometimes we just get like that last nine holes of the day or we loop around for another 18. We would be playing with, you know, like some 20 year old kids or some 50 year old guys. And, and mm-hmm. just trying to like assimilate into that small group of people for like four hours and to be able to hold a conversation and interact. Cause I mean, obviously it kind of looks like it, but we've done 17 episodes of these shows and I've not run out of anything to say. And I think a mm-hmm. huge part of that is, is that time early on with golfing. Yeah. Yeah. How to interact with a variety of people. And, um, yeah, you get it. I think it's funny you describe and you resonate with those things. It's like why you guys probably love RGC as much as you do. And I do, right. Like, and people with that mindset kind of gravitate towards that, that concept, right. Like membership for all. Um, yeah, I started, I was doing the, the solo rounds probably a year before I got exposed to RGC. And then when you, when you saw it and the concept and you see kind of how their message evolved, it's like. No wonder I fell in love with this. This is like brand and community. Yeah. Cause that's where like, I want, like I've always, I've said it, if I've said it once, I've said it a few times too. It's like, I want to play golf with people who look, think differently than I do. And then find that common bond and learn from somebody that something completely different that I never would have known before. Doesn't get and more like, different than I this. Just, what was that? <laughs> so it doesn't get more different than this. I know, but I love, I just, I love it. Like this is, this is always one of the highlights of my week is just, cause we've, you know, we've, we've interacted a few times via email, but it's just like, there's, there's an, I don't know. I don't even, I don't know that I think that it's awkward, but you always go like, oh man, what are we going to talk about? And then two and a half hours goes past and you go, holy crap. I should have went to yeah. bed an hour ago. Right. I'm <laughs> really, I'm really, I'm really tired, but this is, this is amazing. And we've just continuously had these conversations and I just like, I love it. I love this podcast. Cause it feels like, Hey, it's, you know, Sean and I are kind of like the two guys who play golf together. We invite, we randomly invited a third and then the audience is the fourth person in the group. And it's just us hanging out and playing golf with one person driving around in their car, like laughing and trying to like yell at us and say like, haha, that's funny. But we don't, yep. you know, we've got like headphones on and we don't get to hear them. Hmm. So what, so, so you said a friend introduced you to RGC. I'm curious about what a good how friend, that, how, how that happened. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, work colleague of mine, uh, Mark, he and I, um, we, we tagged a little trip, we had a work trip to North Carolina. And so we tagged on a few extra days and we did a little Pinehurst area trip. So didn't play Pinehurst, um, but did spend a half day on the cradle. Um, And it is exactly what they say. It's like the most fun in golf. Have you guys played it? 
No, Soon. but I, I, oh. I, I've just gone down a little bit of a uh, Pinehurst rabbit hole because we're playing with half set. Days. We're playing we're with half set early, early December. Two, two, eight, and ten, right, Sean? Four, ten, and two. Four, ten, and two. Oh. Is, is what we're doing. And the cradle just looks, it looks so yeah. fun. And I, and this is where like, cause you're, you're a par three golfer too. I play 95% of my golf mm-hmm. on a par three course. I, I love it. And I think That's there's great. a lot of people who kind of give par three courses some flack, but it is, it no, is they're fun. The, yeah. It's the perfect approachable golf. All right. So let's loop back to part yeah. three courses, but tell us about the rest of your friend. Go. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So Mark and I were, we were doing Pinehurst trip, but we did, um, tobacco road and a couple other, maybe less, less notable courses. Um, actually I think we played where Midwest pine, wherever the, the women's open was being played pine there needles. that year actually pine needles. pine needles. Yes. Yeah. We played pine needles and then we played at Midwest pine or Midwest one of them, we went to the wrong course and then ended up at the right one, but we went on this trip together. It was four days of golf before, um, before work. And, you know, uh, I, I stopped drinking about five years ago, so we weren't going out to the bar or anything afterwards. So it was like, what are we, you know, what are we doing staying in? And got, got takeout one day. Um, we had an early round the next day and he was like, Oh, you should check out adventures in golf. Like, have you seen this before? And so, he got me hooked on my like YouTube golf creator. Cause like I didn't, I addicted to golf, but I didn't, I don't watch professional golf at all. I've like no relationship with professional golf. Um, I know the names and Not I, even check, like, like, the the majors. Ma- I check like the majors now with how much I'm involved. And I, I started watch content. Like I do watch, I do watch a little bit. Um, usually just like the, like the master's website's great to just like, catch up on tiger's round or whatever it is. But, um, I really had no relationship with consuming golf was just playing it. And, um, yeah, he started to show me these stories and, uh, yeah, we, we started to watch a couple of those and then I've just, yeah, then it just snowballed into following RGC and half my wardrobes probably. <laughs> I, I heard you talk about it, Sean, though, but if it was actually, it's probably a quarter, but if it was cheaper to get stuff shipped to Canada, it'd probably be, oh. it'd probably be half. No uh, word of a, no word of a lie. So uh, I was gifted a little bit of uh, I was gifted some money from the Bond Head trip uh, for the, all the volunteers. Got a little bit of um, yep. a gift card, and I I sent myself a hoodie, a shirt, and a jacket. That's it. Mm-hmm. That was less than the shipping. Yeah, Sean. When if you're trying to get something, let me know. Cause now I ship myself to hotels that I'm going to, I travel to the U S often for work. So I ship myself stuff to the hotel I'm going to, and I pick it up there. Oh. That's how I got this sweater actually. Cause it's just, the price is crazy. So I just plan, I, I plan it in, in front and I, I know they're working on it. And it's challenging. We do international shipping. It's not an easy feat. Um, you gotta yeah, start somewhere, but it's... yeah, it's, but, um, but yeah, if you I need, ship, I we're ship family now. So let me know. Some, some some stickers and some patches in yeah. like a eight by ten envelope and it was closing in on a hundred dollars yeah to get it to get it there and granted we had a little bit of a timeline but i was like the guy told me that and i was like excuse me what it's stickers it's paper right it's sticky paper and meanwhile yeah. like you can ship something to like washington state in the same time frame and it's like fourteen dollars and that's for yeah, that UP that that United Postal Service. I don't know if it's going to oh, get there. They're sketchy. No, I know. I agree. 100%. <laughs> I hate you, USPS, with all my heart. Yeah, I shipped. I, I sent Sean a um, a master's flag at the beginning yeah. of the year, and I kind of thought to myself, like, I just envisioned this, and and like Amazon and all these things have ruined us because it's like mm-hmm. you ship something out and you expect that it's going to be there in two days. And like a month goes past and I'm like, this guy has not said thank you for something so <laughs> amazingly thoughtful. And I'm like, hey, bro, did you get the thing? And he's like, I didn't even get it yet. And then I was like, then I looked at like the tracking and they're like, we don't know where it is. <laughs> I did yeah, that get it. Right. And that flag is hanging proudly in my golf cabinet. So it's... I and should then, send like, you a photo of that. And then like two more weeks goes past and then he's like, I finally got it. And I just, it was like, I, you just 
don't it's it's not like you're shipping something to australia it's yeah. literally across an imaginary line in the same continent yeah, yeah i don't get it all right so what was your favorite episode of adventures in golf i was just gonna ask you guys the one that got me um like yeah like teary-eyed and everything was uh naked the, golf the, the best blind golfers <laughs> no that was envious but yeah the 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 bet the two best flying golfers that one um yeah i was like man how do i how do i get into doing this like caddy it would be like such a rewarding yeah. opportunity I, I was, that one got me when he took when he took the blindfold off like i you could just feel how like authentic that reaction was and it like chills yeah that one in special olympics were the two mm-hmm. that really endeared me into this community because that is you like you said it was real and that is a topic and a subject matter that is that does not get covered in golf media it's Mm -hmm. just especially youtube golf because it's not the the cool sexy kind of story that's behind it but when you think about like here's raw emotion and really being inclusionary. I mean, there was, they were, they were, uh, cause I, I'm, I'm not a type of person where I'll like go out and spend a bunch of money on stuff, but I'd like grab my wallet and my computer. And I was like, I'm buying stuff from like these people because yeah. I just loved it. I loved it that much. Have you tried it? Blind golf? No, but I've, I've definitely hit a lot more golf balls one handed since talking to Matt a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago and just completely every time I try it, I become even more awestruck by his ball striking ability because I just, I can't hit anything past a hundred yards. I can't hit anything past 60 yards and he's mm-hmm. shellacking drives two fifty on the fly one handed. I mean, granted, and there's a lot of it, a, a decade's worth of experience to get to that point, but you just so ridiculously impressive. Yeah. And just, and just people and, and anybody who looks at their life and goes like, I've got all these things working against me, but screw it. I'm going to find out and I'm going to figure out how to do these things myself. And I'm not going to let some minor or major life setback s- steal something away from me. That's yeah. one we should do. I'm going to work on that, Sean. I'm going to rewatch that blind golf one and see if we can get somebody, one of those people on the show. I think that would yeah, be. I was going to say, you know, like we can do some cradle and do some blind golf. We could just see what got, it's like. You guys should do, do the experience before you have them on and you know, like speak. Yeah. Speak from your own. Cause it's uh that would be, be I wild. couldn't imagine. I, I did a blind, a blind. He's got to make sure like there's no one in the way. Right. I did, I did a blind dinner a couple of years ago and they, the room was just full on pitched out black. I mean, mm-hmm. to the, you, they, they made you even take off. Like if you had like an eye, like an eye watch or something like that, they made you take it off because of a little green light. And that was such a, like, I'm not a claustrophobic person, but you just felt so, I was so scared to move and we were, eating dinner in the complete dark. Mm. So you're like, I'm going to knock a drink over. And they're like, Oh, Hey PS, if you want to refill on your drink, the tea pitchers in the middle of the table, go figure it out. <laughs> that and word scared go, those good. Like Sean, you're saying, you know, worried about people being in front of like the cur even just the courage it takes to like, try doing that. Never mind the, you know, you don't know who's watching the potential I'll do that over invisible. Like I'll give you that much. <laughs> you would really? I, hey, I I I did it. I did it the other day, and like I felt like I was in like golfing the kingdom. Like I was, I was seeing the ball, and I was I was literally hitting my shot. I'm like I'm gonna land it on the flag shadow and release the hole. It it sure it's not it's not every time, but I definitely when you take when you take the time to do it. I never lift my head on my, on my, uh, practice swing. I always keep it down. And I, I started to look up and, and watch it. And 
Sean, we're going to convince you to do this one day because it, yeah, like, good stuff, I mean, man. I'm going to be doing it 200 times uh, <laughs> in a couple weeks. We'll do it. Don't worry. We'll do it. <laughs> it works. All right. So, well, let's, let's talk about that. So before we go any further, if, um, Everything that we talk about today, if you're curious to learn more, go back and listen to episode 10 with Max from Movember Foundation. So tell us tell us about Birdiethon 1.0 and how that's led into Birdiethon 2.0 this year. Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe I'll start by just saying, so I'm a, I'm a Mo Bro. I've been supporting Movember for... This is my 13th year doing it. And I know I know you guys are passionate about Movember as well. And one of the things with these like fundraisers, um, I think Movember's done a good job evolving it and finding new ways for you to ask people to donate. But I was struggling with, you know, 13 years of doing it, just kind of going back to the old well and saying, Hey, can you give me 50 bucks for Movember? I'm gonna grow my staff or I'm I'm gonna walk 60 kilometers this year. And that, it's great for people who are new to it to have those new things. But 13 years in, like I've done that gambit now. And so I got to this point where I was just trying to think how can, like, what can I do differently? And so I wanted to earn donations rather than just ask for them and being passionate about golf and always thinking about how I can roll golf into stuff. I'd started playing at this par three and I'd always thought like, man, it would be fun to just play here all day long and try to get as many birdies as I possibly can. And so I was thinking about, I don't know if you guys are, do you have like skip a thon or my wife's a Gilmore girls fan. I think they have like a dance a thon or something. And these fundraisers where it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to go X amount of time, pledge this money to donate. And if I go ahead and achieve it, you're going to donate money. So what I did was I played 18 loops of my nine hole par three. So 162 holes over eight hours. And before that I'd asked people to, pledge a dollar amount per birdie I made, um, gave them the opportunity to put a max in case I went crazy. Mm. Uh, spoiler, I did not go crazy. It was super windy and cold in November playing. Uh, so I got, I had 14 birdies, which was a quality day. Uh, but the crazy thing was my seventh hole of the entire day. I spun one back, got an ace, which was, uh, unreal. And, uh, yeah. I was playing one one ball per hole, so like it felt true and real as much as true and real can feel on a seventy seventy eight yard par three hole. Um, but it was uh, it was awesome, and so everyone was super excited about that. So almost across the board, everyone just donated their max um, donation. They just didn't care about the birdies anymore. They just put in the full max donation. So I raised about twenty five hundred bucks. So fast forward to this year trying to figure out, Hey, how can, like, how can I go further? Like, I'm still going to go to the same circle. It's still the same. Well, so I started to talk to some people who were really excited about what I was doing last year and, and extended the golfers. So criteria number one is, are you going to be serious about fund- fundraising? And then criteria number two is, can you potentially get a couple birdies <laughs> throughout <laughs> the day? And so, uh, we put up lights at the par three this year. Um, so now we've got lights so we can play into the night. They're keeping them on for, for the last week for us on November 2nd. So, um, you know, par three birdies are twos trying to, trying to think about twos a lot. So the goal is to try to play 200 holes this year, um, myself. And then the, there's five other golfers committed right now. Um, we already have $391 as of a few minutes ago, we got pledge. Uh, pledge per birdie. Uh, every each individual golfer has their own pledges, but collectively we got three ninety one pledged per birdie, and a max out of about five thousand um, dollars. Nice. I'm, I'm going on the RGC Irish Major. Some of the guys there have uh, donated cash cash dollars to it. Yeah, I see a face shot. We'll talk about that. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's uh, some people donated some cash already, so it's about six hundred bucks in. And then the club is getting involved this year, so. Um, Instead of paying your green fee, if you show a twenty-five dollar donation to Movember, you get to play golf all day with us. Um, and then, as of a couple hours ago, we're uh, officially endorsed Movember Canada event. So I've got the endorsement letter for any sponsors who are Wait. listening to this. Taylor Made Canada. I play TP fives. Yeah. Mm. 
<laughs> I, I don't or know power if built. yet, but we're trying. Power built, guys. Power built. We know, That's we know a big Paul. shout. We know hey, Paul. I can, Paul I can, wants to get involved. Yeah. That's what, so <laughs> how did you, so 13 years ago, so you've been really a MoBro, because I think Max said it's 21 years old this year. So you've been involved with them yeah. for two thirds of two thirds of their life. How did that become such an important part of your year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I lost my grandfather, um, who's a role model when I was, when I was quite young, um, uh, to prostate cancer. Uh, actually they just did a monument here. He was, uh, he's part of a, uh, problem that was happening here with just like firefighters not having proper safety gear for, um, asbestos related stuff, that kind of stuff. So, you know, nobody knew any better, but, um, we lost him early and it, it, it appears it's a connection to that, the type of cancer he passed away from, but, um, yeah, prostate cancer. Uh, he was somebody that, uh, a lot of people in our family and a lot of people within our circle, like idolize, um, just a very, um, hardworking, uh, health conscious individual. And, uh, he left a mark on me, even though we lost him when I was really, I was really young. Um, and so, yeah, just when, when it became, I was, I knew about it. And at the beginning it was really that like prostate testicular cancer. They weren't focusing as much on mental health then, um, really connected with me, um, having lost him. So it was something that I just like, I, I, I grabbed onto and I was part of clubs in my university. And so I used to run, I would run like casino nights or different fundraisers. So, um, we did a bunch of events and stuff and just, there's always something I, I, I would always come back to each year. Um, and then, you know, me personally, uh, my immediate circle, just like challenges with different, uh, different issues with mental health, those types of things as, as they started to expand, what they were focusing on. And I love, I love what Max said, actually, and I don't know if it's kind of a Movember quote or a Max quote, but that like healthier men make healthier communities that like really, I really latched, latched on with that. Um, I resonate with that, that type of language. And so, um, yeah, it's just how they've evolved has kept me engaged. Um, so the hook was definitely my grandfather. I still do it for my grandfather. I think about my grandfather a lot. I lost him in October. I think it was about 20 years ago now. Um, and, um, and then, yeah, they just, I think how they've evolved and they, they function as an organization. It's, it's just kept me, kept me hooked. So just trying to find creative ways to keep it, keep it fun and exciting for me as well. And like I said, I love what they've done. It's just for me, I've done those and I've asked for the money that way. So I had to push myself to do something new or different. Yeah. No, I, I feel that. And it's, it's amazing what you've done in one year with kind of like showing up by yourself and going, Hey, I'm going to do this thing and what you've built it into. And I mean, like Birdithon 3.0 might be epic. And maybe yeah. we get, uh, Sean, I, mean, I love Canada. I, I don't need an excuse to come up there, but hey, your first live show could be at Badlands golf club. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we might do, we, we, we've got, uh, we've got party in a parking lot podcast in, oh, in, in, in at least the conceptual stages to go do that at Beth page, but that would be, that would be fun to come be a part of that and support it. Cause you know, Movember foundation, it's, it's not sexy stuff, mm -hmm. you know, pros prostate cancer and testicular cancer and, and, and mental health and suicide prevention. But what that organization does and brings awareness to and, and just empowering people to go out and like, cause I mean, th that day, I mean, you, you, you might impact a couple hundred people yep. and, and, and then they tell two or three of your friends and you kind of think to yourself all the time, like what, what can I do as one human being to change the world? And when you think, when you think that huge, you go like, I can't do a damn thing at all. But the amount of, you know, because you've raised what, like $10,000 over 13 years? 
Yeah, yeah. Like on my own page, I, I, that's the one thing I used. We used to do events under other groups or names, so I've organized other stuff. Um, but yeah, directly on my page, I think I'm just shy of eleven thousand this year. So trying to basically double that this year. Our target's ten k. Yeah. That'd be amazing. But I mean, yeah. like to me, it's like always the money part of raising money for Movember is always an amazing situation. Yeah. But just going out and having those conversations yeah. and telling people like, hey, listen, this, you know, like there's nothing fun about getting a prostate exam. Yeah. But if you go do it and you find something early and it saves your life. Yeah. You know, like that's that's Pre huge. And and it, it might not ever be try. like, hey, this guy yeah. named Alex and I played at this golf tournament and he's the reason that I'm still here and healthy and everything like that. But it, that, that's not what's important. It's just, you, you hear those message. You hear those stories all the time, Brian, right? Like, and, and it's to, to your point, like to me, the, like the 10,000 is in, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with the $10,000, but city news is showing up because we're raising $10,000 and they're going to run a story and they're going to talk about it you guys are talking to me here because of this. So exactly like you're saying, like break down the stigma, talk about it, be open. Don't be afraid to share that at 30 years old, I got an exam. I have early detection. It runs in my family. I had some risk factors that made me do it. Turned out negative. And do I regret doing it? Not at all. Did it suck? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you, yeah. but I do it again. And if I had the same symptoms, I do it again tomorrow. Right. So, it's, it, but it, it's conversation like this that they, you know, that's what November's em empowering us to do is, yeah. is talk about and it. It's not a big deal. The, the relief that you get from <laughs> going in and going like, oh, thank God, yeah. that's not a thing I don't have to worry about. Like, I still need to go check that box next year or two years from now or something like that. Mm -hmm. But at least I'm not worried about, like, it's like when your check engine light's on. And you go, eh, well, I mean, it's probably nothing. Maybe the gas cap's just loose, or maybe there's no oil and your engine's about to explode. Like that anxiety of something hanging over your head is always worse than going through a couple minutes of something uncomfortable to go, okay, well, cool. Everything's great. Now I feel better about myself and I can continue to drive down the road free of my, you know, free and clear of mind. I've never heard anyone openly say they regret doing it. Yeah. Like, it's okay to say it sucks, but uh, right, you're you're right. That re that that release is uh, or relief is um, well worth it for sure. Yeah. So, how much longer will you uh, be able to play golf up there after after this event? Or is that kind of I the thing that's been interesting to me is I always had this perception that like north of Florida golf just completely shut down for everybody else. And I was on this little Island where like we could play golf all year in like maybe like California and like Arizona and you know, that area. But what I've, what I've found in having a golf podcast is that like you guys are insane up North <laughs> and that you'll push it as far as you can. Oh man. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Brian? Have you heard of a frost delay? Do you know what that is? Uh, we, we, I, uh, <laughs> last year I took, uh, I took Benji to go play winter pines and they had a yeah. frost delay because like we, we get mornings below freezing, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's more like ha ha funny frost delay yeah. than it is like what you guys really have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Sean, how often, how, how late do you play in the season? You do the frost delays? Uh, the season is pretty much done now. I played yeah. my last round on Monday, but yeah. like I played silver tip like, almost a month ago and we lost the front nine because of a, of a frost yeah. delay. Like we, we teed off at four 30. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was mid September. Yeah. 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 So for me, for me, I usually squeak a few in and, and cause I'm playing par three or a twilight membership or something like that. You know, it's, I'm okay if I'm just playing six holes or whatever. Like sometimes I just go out to play golf for an hour. Right. So I'm not, if I was going to go play, I, you won't see me go paying for a 18 hole round, but it's, it's supposed to be 20 degrees on Saturday. And somebody just called me. I'm playing 18. I, I wasn't going to book it, but I looked and it's 20 and we're talking Celsius. That's 70. Cause this is a Canadian. Brian. Cause this is yeah, a Canadian. That's podcast. Right. Is, oh, uh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so it's going to be beautiful on Saturday. I wouldn't, I, I hadn't planned it. I got, got pulled to that one, but usually I usually am playing right until the end of October. We are a bit, we're probably a bit further south than you, Sean, uh, in the Toronto area. So, um, and, and a bit Much closer to some water. So sometimes we get, you know, you can, there's a few courses that get some lake effect and they can, they can stay, stay open a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I usually squeak one out first week of November and then I'm done. Last year when I did this, I couldn't do a, I couldn't do a push up for, uh, almost three months because of the mats, which is crazy. Cause I hit more than 162 balls in a week or sometimes in a day and so off of the mats at these par threes. But I think it was, it was actually just like how cold it was and actually the amount of time between each one. So it was like, you're just doing this big impact like every once in a while over eight hours rather than just like beating my wrist up for an hour and then being done with it. It was just that like constant nagging of jarring. it. But I, like I couldn't, I couldn't do a push up cause my, my wrist was all banged up. So I can guarantee my last round will be November 2nd and then I'll <laughs> be icing and rehabbing until uh, April when I go to Ireland, hoping, hoping to mm. God I can swing a club. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that Ireland trip. But, um, yeah, no lie, if you're doing this again next year and you want to expand it, I mean, send an invite this way. I would love to try and figure out a way to get out there and, you know, do my part with that. That sounds like hey, a real I, blast. I mean, I mentioned it to Brian and anyone anyone who hears this and has got a par three course and, they, you know, you've got, you've got three weeks to still fundraise, like, do it at your course. Like, I don't – I don't – care we're talking about this because i want people to repeat it right so if you want the framework and you want to do it in your town um i know sean you might be a bit too cold for you but like yeah man uh i i I would love to get us all together not going to happen in the next three weeks but like do it do where you are do it in a simulator like whatever if you like the framework and you resonate with it my my info is in the link text me and i'll i'll teach you how to pledge and it's, when people tell you like oh why do i pledge why can't i just don't donate money like i'll give you the script let's talk about it it's certainly a lot more fun um two or three years ago i think it was three years ago i ran 60 miles over a long weekend so i did a marathon <sighs> a marathon and then eight miles and i thought to myself like i'm gonna run i ran on the beach in Daytona in November. And I go, Oh, I mean, it's going to be great. The weather will be perfect. It was like the hottest three days <laughs> in like the history of November. And it was great. Cause it was on the sand. And so like the impact wasn't nearly as bad, but three days on the beach with no shade trees. Yeah. I was absolutely roasted by sunday afternoon so i think the the all-day golf is is certainly a lot more fun than trying to run 60 miles this year is going to be a lot more fun though having people there like it it was the best part was someone came and carried my bag for me for a nine or something my mom came with the dog and walked a couple loops with me somebody brought me lunch friends came by and and caddy actually with the old app i had I had a, a, a kid named Alex as well actually come out and play my second and third nine with me first thing in the morning, which was was really cool. Just you had an R, there's not a lot of RGC membership up in Canada and to have somebody come out and that was cool to to do that community. But um this year with the in person portion, you know, we have about twenty plus people so far committed to come. The news story's gonna run in the day, hopefully Hopefully that pulls some some people in for the evening, and we still got some work to go on getting getting some more out. But that energy will help because there was there was an hour and a half at one point where I I started doing like speed golf and running because I was just how do I keep my own like energy up and mind interest um, right yeah yeah because it was Cause it, that it was concept tough. of like oh I want to play golf all day sounds really amazing yeah. Until when you there's, try doing it. <laughs> right. When there's some kind of excuse on why you can't do it or after like. Yeah, just put a hours. slice of pizza on every green and I'd be good. 
I was I, w- I was eating an uncrustable on like every every eighteen holes. Those were uh, I had to have them for the grape. Uh, I don't even know if we get dra- grape up here in what? Canada. I don't know. I've never seen it. We have a chocolate one, but Ooh, the Nutella. Yeah, those. Are I nice am a chocolate. I'm a huge grape grape jelly. Okay, fan. just I, I lived I in Alex New York for a couple. Like, we might be like long lost like twin <laughs> brothers or something like that because between the yeah. between par three golf being raised, yeah. our parents dropping us off at golf courses. And then I, I quit drinking about five years ago as well. So nice. we're like, yeah, January, yeah. January will be five years from now. Really? Me too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was super, no way. Un, super uneventful. I had, I had really kind of cut way down and then we were at the Rolex race and I thought to myself, like, oh, I'm at the race. I should have at least like one beer. Like, this is what you do. And I drank like a Stella. And if I knew that that was going to be like my last beer, I would have picked something drastically better than <laughs> than a Stella. And then didn't even really kind of realize that I quit drinking and then COVID happened. And then I went, you know, what's probably not the right thing to do is be home with the accessibility to drink alcohol all day long. Like that would have been a nightmare situation with, I think my daughter would have been like one and a half and my son was like four. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, this, uh, this whole alcohol thing needs to be something in the rear view mirror for me because this isn't, it's not, not gonna work yeah yeah no it's uh the covid i think if you i know a few people kind of stopped around that time when when the social pressures are pulled away and stuff like that and then yeah it it does become a habit i mean now no uh addiction is a different challenge right i i'm I'm not sitting here saying it's easy that that is a that's a disease that's a that's a different scenario for people but for for me i think social pressure and social drinking was was the kind of what drew drew you to doing it more and so i had been scaling back stopped stopped myself as well and then before you know it it's you know a few months in you're not doing it and then you have to sleep at your own house so someone's got a dd and i'm dding for three four months and then before you know it you're a year in and if you don't put a target on it it's really easy to not like then celebrate that you've accomplished anything. You just, then it's two years now, it's five years. And so, yeah, it's been, I can't say I miss it, um, but it definitely, you know, I know it's not, I'm well aware it's not that easy for everybody. Yeah. It took me, it took me a lot of years of Mm -hmm. trying to quit, to get to a point where it was like really cut down. And then I bet it was, probably four years of consciously working down from like, okay, you know, and I never was like full on raging alcoholic, like daytime drinker vodka person, but I just loved, I loved craft beer, Mm -hmm. like, you know, double, triple IPAs. And you drink a couple of those too many nights a week. And they like, Oh, I only drank two beers, but you're like, Oh, really? I drank six. My wife was my bartender. Man, like that's how we met. So, <laughs> you know, um, you know, paper planes, those were my jam. So, um, yeah, I, I hear you though. It's, uh, you yeah, just go back and help. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I would, but grape jelly, that. grape yes. jelly, Brian is like yes. okay, good. 100% good. two years in New York. You can't leave there not enjoying grape jelly on rye toast. So yeah. that's, that was my life. What's your PB and J of choice there, Sean? What's my, um, not a huge jam fan, really. Like, mm. no. Peanut butter banana. Sandwich eater. No. No, I'm really weird. I don't eat a ton of sandwiches. Mm. I'm like do a. We get, do we get into is a hot dog or a hamburger sandwich debate hot here? Or is a that a different dog. podcast? Yeah, hot dog's a hot dog. I don't know what it is. I can't classify it as anything. A hot dog's just a hot dog. Yeah. Because then, so like, is do... a hamburger a sandwich? You're a hot uh, dog at a turn kind of guy, then. Oh yeah, yeah. a big smoky guy. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oktoberfest sausage. It's my season right now. So that's true. Yeah, we got that rolling around here too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Big so let's, hot dog. let's let's hear about this um, RGC major trip. Yeah, on, yeah, into Ireland. Yeah. So you because maybe you could be our first person that we interview who's got a really good chance at being on a breaking series. One in twenty five. Yeah, that's I all think, it is. I feel like it's going to be one in twenty four because I think. I, oh, actually, I don't. Know. Yeah, I guess you can say. I'm sure other people said they're going. There's no. Thing I've never. I haven't met anyone else yet. You're I'll the put first it this way: there's one guy who's done a breaking series. Oh, Niall. My, there you go. And Niall, yeah, yeah, my, I couldn't yeah. imagine. Uh, you yeah. I can't. About, they can't pick him twice, right? No. But <laughs> as far as I know, though, the way they've worded it in some of the videos, there's champions of some of these other rounds. So, I mean, <laughs> but yeah. Niall's not a very good golfer. So, I mean, I don't think he's really got a, a case in this unless they really <laughs> handicap it. <laughs> Shots fired. I, yeah. I have, they have not Sorry, told he, how it's going to be handicapped, but I do believe there will be some. It sounds like there'll be some fair and fair and equal comp- competition. Hopefully, it's whoever raises the most amount of money for November. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> Oof. I'm re- I'm gunning for it. I'd love to see a, another Canadian on there. We need yeah. our redemption yeah, we back couple, after. Yeah. We need our redemption back after the Pebble Beach episode. <laughs> we did not do very well. He's a fellow Ontarian, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think he's out of Toronto. I should. Uh, oh man, yeah. If anyone from RGC is listening, he's got his info. Or I don't have any socials, so I don't know how I'd get a hold. We're gonna figure out what his pizza place is. Yeah, I should yeah. invite him out to Birdie Thon. That'd be sweet. Fine. Yeah. All right. I'll find him. Yeah. So you you in. applied for it, right? And then they did they send you an email? Like, how does that work? Because I'm sure they had a lot of applications, but it was yeah. a big ask to have that much money up front. So yeah, yeah, and um, uh, I think one, it was a benefit of the timing. I'll, I will say, I'm a legacy member, um, so I did. So there are some perks. So I, I don't know why I was selected, what order I was in or, or whatever it is, but I did jump on the legacy train for that perk of, hey, the Chantry are we knew we'd do something playing eventually. a bar. <laughs> exactly. Get to play in a breaking series. So in, in the way they worded it, I think they had a couple specific spots set aside, but it was, it was a first come first serve. Um, and I think it had... It, they were planning to have it open for three or four days. Um, it was one of those random days I had a meeting canceled. I turned on a, a video that had literally just been posted. And I was probably one of the first couple people watching this RGC video. And the ad came up and I was like, no way, that sounds really cool. My wife was on a break. She, she runs a nail salon out of the house. And I just said, would it be crazy if I went on this trip? Like, it's going to be like all my golf spend for a very long time. Actually, we can talk about that. I might not be spending much money on golf in the near future because I'm moving. But um, uh, yeah, I was like, got to do this. And she's, she's such a supporter because like what it does for me mentally, like she pushes me out to like, she's like, go, go golf, like take time and space for yourself. She's been amazing about that. And so she was like, you have to do it you have to go because I'm always talking about these breaking series. And so we said, yeah, we'll figure it out on the back end. And I applied immediately. And I think it was a sense, it was a sense of timing. Um, So they were going to have it open for a few days. We all started getting emails. Like, I don't know if it was that day or the next day. And it was like, Hey, we had like 400 people apply already. So we just shut it down. You're going to have to have your deposit in by Friday. Otherwise it goes to the next person. And I was like, Okay, just got a new credit card. Let's do this. <laughs> well, congrats on uh, on that. You're gonna have an an insane experience. Uh, as you know, like I got to hang out with the crew over the weekend yeah. last, and they're a fantastic bunch of people. I mean, I hope you get to hang out with them, but they're the best people to be around. So, yeah, it seems it. it I don't know who's gonna show up or what it's gonna look like, but yeah, it sounds like there's gonna be. Three, I think three spots. I think they're selecting three of us, so hopefully we get like the the pro, like they just did on, uh, you know, um, oh yeah, that the old awesome. course, right? Or as a, as a to round out the foursome or something. Like that. That'd be pretty cool. But 
Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm talking assumptively that I might, you know, land a spot either way, or I, I hope there's no pro and I don't get selected. So I don't feel like I missed out. <laughs> I think either way, like the, the five courses are, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be really cool to spend five days with like-minded individuals, right? Like this is, this is so easy. So to go on a trip with people who are like-minded RGC fans, like have a good relationship with golf. Um, and it's just going to be cool in ireland <laughs> that's gonna be a train wreck <laughs> yeah <laughs> i might be doing the irish exit as yeah, the sober guy actually rush. there's a few there's a few of us uh there's you a guys, few sobers on that need to like i think you're gonna need to like gang up and like hold strong between yeah. the, between like safety and numbers there <laughs> we're all gonna be would... praying we're gonna be praying that the the sober i think there's three sober like two you're going to be praying you're, you're bunked with one of the other ones for the end of the night. It's going to get yeah. wild. Huh. Well, you no, it seems like a good group. It's a good chat. County. Yeah. It might be the, the, the three people that keep everybody else alive and out of trouble or something like that. Yeah, they, they say they're doing shuttle buses, but somehow I'm going to be the DD. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, Royal I County see. down, like that's worth the trip in itself. Like, holy yeah. man, I can't believe that you got on that. I'm I'm excited for you. Yeah, no, I'm thrilled. I think I'm I'm gonna like I said, just kind of pour into it, do the do the caddies, just like embrace. That's the one thing we didn't do when I went to uh, Pinehurst. I still never I've never played with a caddy, but um, man, if I if I did um, Tobacco Road again, just with all those blind shots and stuff, it's super fun, and there's all these things you want to do. But it really, it, it, I think it'd be you could just enjoy what's what's happening a little bit more if you didn't have to spend so much time trying to figure out that yardage book of like where to put the ball and someone was just telling me because that place is beautiful um the shots are so cool but like I, I wish i was like i was paying attention a lot but i still feel like I, I i wish i wasn't in that book as often trying to figure stuff out and just somebody told me like aim over that tree and just like embrace what's going on so with county down and stuff like some of these classic blind shot spots. I just have somebody tell me and I'll just, I'll look at the wispy grass and enjoy it. Yeah. Well, and then you, I think you, you become so much more submerged in the full experience. Like you mentioned, instead of just trying to be like head down doing math and not seeing everything that's unfolding around you. And yeah. to me, it's like having a caddy is so great. Cause it's like, you've got like, a friend and a psychologist <laughs> and a wealth of information. And like, I just love that they, joke. they just stop me from doing all the dumb shit I would normally do on the course. Right. It's so helpful. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Take the medicine, take the medicine, yeah. Sean. Well, and I think too, with putting, cause I got to play TPC Sawgrass uh, two years ago and I didn't strike the ball very well as as it was a ridiculously hot summer day and I played with three horrendously bad gentlemen. But I had seven one putts mm. on that on that golf course. So saved a lot of pars, saved a lot of doubles into into bogeys. But just having somebody to go like, nope, this here, that, okay, confirm, no, pull it in. And yep. just and, and granted like those those greens are super primo but just having having somebody to kind of help you or like i'd go to putt and i'd go this is where i'm aiming and he's like absolutely not absolutely <laughs> no not. way <laughs> and, and then he'd say nope like two more feet that way and you go you're on drugs <laughs> and then you go like who you know you'd be like you gonna trust me and i'm like all right yeah and then sure enough like you'd aim i and you go, oh, okay, well, all right. I mean, it Man. turns out, it turns out, you know a lot more about this golf course than I do because I've uh, never played this hole before. Famous last words: If I get on camera, this is gonna, this will ruin me. But like, I can hit a ball end over end, like putting. Now I can hit a line. So if if I have somebody who can help me read, like I, I'm, I'll listen to you. You just tell me where to do it. And that actually, Pinehurst. That's why I wish I had a caddy. Mostly was, I've never played on Bermuda 
or like grain, like grainy greens. I, it took, it took me like three rounds until somebody mentioned it to me. They're like, do you not understand like yeah. down grain, up grain. And I was like, no, I was like, mm-hmm. no idea. I don't understand how I left this short, then put it just past and then blew it 20 feet. Like what's going on? Chipping down grain. Well, that beat me up. <laughs> yeah. And then like figuring out what club to hit into it. Oh yeah. Oh. It's, it's yeah. wild grass because it doesn't it doesn't get long. Like we had we got 18 inches of rain with that hurricane last week. And mm-hmm. the rough is just juicy. Shaggy thick now. I mean, it's like <laughs> 1970s carpet, and the ball just goes brum, like yeah. sinks down into it. Like you just wouldn't like you just wouldn't believe. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was just flying by. I had no idea. Just point and shoot and hope. <laughs> so what was it like? What was what was the cradle like you had mentioned? Absolutely oh man. That. Yeah, you have like I don't know what your guys' itinerary looks like, but you have to you have to play. So it's I I mean, I don't know if they've changed it. It was it was a while ago when I played, but um, it was like fifty bucks for your green fee. You get one green fee, but then you can play as much as you want. You just can't book a second fee. So as long as there's a spot open, you can just reloop. You just can't book it. So if somebody ends up booking day? it two times. Yeah. So the earlier you can get there, get your first tea time play, and then just loop as much as you want. Um, we went straight from the airport to Pine, to Piners. We didn't know about this. So we, we had lunch at the clubhouse and then played, which we immediately regretted. Which we had like played and then known we could keep looping because so we played and it was it was February so it was it was pretty relaxed there and uh, there was a lot of open times and so we just went back to the car and grabbed grabbed a different set of two clubs and then played it again with a different club and then went to the putting green and then went back to the car and played it again with two different clubs I think we did I think it was just three. And then it then it closed down. We probably could have got four if we had done done lunch second. But uh, man, it's like the music's playing. No expenses uh, spared. Like on the course, like it looks like you're on Pinehurst. The greens are great. Um, I don't know if it's all season. I assume it would be. You you are hitting off a mat, but I think other than that, season. like yeah, the greens are beautiful. Um, it's all like all the waste area, like the native. Uh, forever, like it, you don't hit into it much, but it, it, it feels and looks like you're on the course. And then they've got speakers running through the whole thing, and that just was, like they know, yeah, the music's going. It's there's not there is no such there's there's nothing more fun than being on that course. I'm looking forward watched, to it. There's a um a older episode of an E L E A L where mm-hmm. he's at the cradle with um, Ashley Mayo playing along with him and like 10 or other, 10 or 11 other people and Gil Hance who yep. designed it too. So that's a pretty, I, I watched that one day this week when we had, when we had power for a short period of time, but yep. cause that's not, I mean, I think that's what two months away now, Sean. We're 55 days away. 55. Yeah. What's the, what's this parking lot that page black thing you guys were talking about? So, you know, Luke Judge, correct? You've heard of his yeah. So he lives out in New York. So he was talking about how it's kind of like the old course where you have to queue in line to get tea times in the morning. So you mm-hmm. sit out overnight in a parking lot and kind of just, you know, find ways to kill the night, you know, and he was talking about tailgating and barbecues and, you know, you know, just shooting the shit with your friends. So we're like, hell, we can take this show on the road and do a podcast in a parking lot. Okay. You guys got a date locked in yet? No. I lived in New York for two years. No one at, I, I, I I had kind of like stopped golfing for a while there because it's just expensive in New York. And, um, I was sitting there the whole time. I didn't even, like I said, I didn't watch professional golf or anything. I didn't even know what Beth played black was or, um, never played like that oldest. (laughs) I didn't pay attention to what course was Carl. I just hit random or I don't remember. But uh, yeah, I was just trying. I was just doing that max spin move, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, yeah. full full back spin. The, the L one there, and yeah, 
And then there's the I don't know why I'm what, doing this. That like oldest course in the Bronx, oldest public course. Oh, um, gosh, it's gone from my head now. Yeah, it's. Uh, I totally know what you're talking about. And oh gonna, someone's talk, laughing Luke at us right Luke now. Luke and Niall are yelling at us right now. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, I don't think it's going to be a next year thing. We'll see because we've already kind of got like an Aaron Hills trip planned in June. So, um, okay. for well, me let me know. I got lots of friends. I got lots of friends in New York, so I can always use an excuse to come down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, don't. That's the thing with me. I mean, don't give me an option. I I can't do this all the time. <laughs> yeah. Spend too much we, money. Yeah, we need that. We need the podcast to start um, paying for some of our elaborate power bill. Golf, power bill. Let's go. Well, we need because, more concurrent viewers. That's all we need. Yeah, because between need- like, oh, hey, we'll just go hang out with Matt and you know, go play, go play some Lynx golf course golf with him. And like, we're going to go see Luke, go, go to Indiana and, and do purgatory and skatopia with Billy. Yeah. I mean, these are some wild adventures that I'm fully I'm getting stretched uh, in over here, <laughs> ready to do. But the, uh, the logistics. And then poor, poor Sean's got to deal with the dollar exchange yeah. too on all these U S trips. Uh, mm. yeah, no one ever comes <laughs> to me. I got to go to yeah. you. Yeah, it's cheaper to come here, Brian. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when I was when I was in college, and then we'll, we'll um, uh, random diatribe. When I was in college, freshman year, I was like, "Hey, listen, everybody, we should go to Montreal for spring break." And they're like, "You're an idiot." And I was like, "Let me elaborate on why this is genius." Flying, we were like flying the reverse flight, so to to fly to Montreal was like literally eighty nine dollars so cheap and i was like super cool party scene all sorts of bars it's canada we're 18 we'll be able to drink and they're like you're stupid why would we go to canada for spring break you're an idiot so we went to panama city beach where Hmm. we were could not legally drink got kicked out of several bars the whole week and this is like late february early march in north florida it was like 30 degrees the whole week. So it was too friggin' cold to be on the beach. And you know who we hung out with the whole time? A bunch yeah. of French Canadian kids from Montreal <laughs> who were like, who were like, they're like, they're like, these guys are awesome. And, and they're like, our friend wanted to go to your town. And they're like, Oh, he's like, you totally, he's like, this place sucks. He's like, you should totally should have gone there. And I was like, you Innovator, see. man. Vindicated. <laughs> should, have, should have listened to Brian. All right. I see a golf ball uh, oh. trophy case back there. What's 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 the one that you're most proud of as 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 your way to end the show tonight? I got mine there too, Ooh. but there's no real trophies in there. Ooh. Most or proud the, of most, most fun. Of, which one's got All the right, best, so, the best so story? Not many of them have a story. I just need to fill it. I don't know how many. Yeah. trophies so i just like the picks balls and i have a bunch of random ones but um i do have um i did get what my dad bought me uh uh one he he came up to caddy we did a four-man uh scramble tournament uh the rbc like rbc scramble puts it on for canada all across canada so that friend of mine justin i mentioned he he got puts a team of four of us together and we tried the last couple of years to do um, local qualifiers and then you get up to regional. So regionals is at Brantford golf and country club, which is I think third oldest golf course here in Canada. Um, so we made it through locals this year, played, played in the regionals. And then if you win that, um, you go to Cabot. So we didn't make it to Cabot, but it was cool to go there and just like a reminder of yourself, like just playing that, little bit of competitive but it's still like scramble it was it was fun we actually the the secret secret sauce for us we played that five dollar game within our forza we were playing but we just didn't even care about the score we just had fun we were actually like harassing each other saying you were going to miss the putt or stuff like that and we just took our mind off of how serious it was and ended up uh, playing really well so yeah made it made it to the 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 qualifiers there and I would say that that's the coolest one, mostly because 
none of them really have a story. They're just <laughs> there because I needed to, I needed to fill that trophy case my dad got me. The hole in one ball isn't in there. Uh, yeah, the one. Um, I was lucky. I got I had two last year, but with a par three, like I I don't know, Brian. You know, like sometimes no, you play I multiple count. balls. Here's, here's, here's no, but my... sometimes you play multiple balls, right? Right. So then, like, then it starts to get a little bit weird, you know. So, um, the hole in one, the actual hole in one ball for birdie thon. I was in the zone of birdie thon. I I literally hosled it into the bush like five holes later. I know exactly where it is, but it's so dense I can't get it. But I play. I was playing the exact same ball. Um, oh no! Good thing. Good thing no one has to see that. But. Uh, the little uh, Taylor made rocket ball. pop ball, yeah. Nice. So this is this is uh, my first one, one, uh, but this was a multi ball round. So I always caveat it. But uh, the second one is exact same ball. It's in the bush by number two. If anyone wants to grab it at Badlands, um, but I can't find it. <laughs> That's the only real one. Yeah, I yeah. I count them. I've only had one. And it was at they count. The six six hole. Oh yeah. And it was it was like eighty it was like eighty eight yards. And two years ago they had a par three at LACC in the US Open that played eighty six. So mm-hmm. I figure if if it's oh. longer than a hole at the US Open, then it fully counts as a legitimate hole. Yeah. Point. I count them. It's uh, for me. It's the it's the multi ball. I'm like, right. I was playing. I, think so. I was I playing six that's... balls, Brian. I was I right. was playing a lot of practice, right? So right. it was like so that's that's, yeah. a, that's a chip. That's a chip in then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the other one was true. The other one was true, and I counted as well. Did you spin it back? You roll it? Did you release it to the hole? I hit yours? it. I hit it, and I thought to myself, it was St. Patrick's Day this year, and I thought that is my initial thought was that was garbage. Yeah. I thought I hit it so short and it's kind of got, it's, um, it's a really beautiful hole kind of angled out towards yeah. the river. And I thought, Oh, you're, you're going to hit that thing short. It's going to roll back down the little false front. And it got on the green. I go, Oh, cool. I made it. And then it just, it just trundled along. And I thought, Oh boy, how, I wonder how close this is going to get without it dropping. Cause I've parked dozens inside of a foot. Mm-hmm. And they just you, you you go like oh it's gonna happen and then it doesn't and like that was the whole time I thought there's no way that's going in and then it dink dropped and I was just went absolutely absolutely nuts but nice. it was it was it was it was pretty magical super super fun sun was setting and everything like that it was it was pretty great so I'm excited to get um, number two in nice. my in my life hopefully at number two i would that would be in in somewhere inter- intermixed in that pinehurst experience to get a hole in one would be that would be awesome john me. you wait you still waiting yeah i came yeah. close to chambers bay a month ago i oh yeah i saw that I saw that. got it on camera too and yeah my heart stopped and then i watched the ball reappear from behind the stick and tapping bird but still it's just like that would have been the coolest spot yeah that is such a weird feeling because you're 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 so ridiculously happy mm-hmm. watching it happen and then it doesn't happen and then you're like, damn it. Mm-hmm. And then you're like mad that it didn't go in and you're like, oh, I got a birdie. But those those birdies always feel like the worst birdies when it's like mm-hmm. that little yeah. know, tapping putt. Like I think if you were playing, if it was on a par four and you hit your ball that close, you're ecstatic to have that birdie. Yeah. But that that one foot putt on a par three, you're just always like, God, it wasn't even a foot. It was like what could have been. It was like five inches. Oh, yeah. Have you been around someone when they got one? My my buddy Cam just did one the other day, and uh, he he's doing birdie thon as well. But it was it was almost more exciting, like like being around him and like trying to like enjoying how he was if he was excited or not or whatever it was just like it, it's a different story. feeling was kind of enjoyable yeah. i don't want to tell this story <laughs> it upsets me greatly mm. so i'm playing i'm playing with a buddy and we're at uh kinsman pitch and putt here in edmonton so it's a it's a pitch and putt obviously holes are short this thing is maybe 90 yards 
Um, this ball does not leave the surface of the ground. This ball is going 200 miles an hour. And this is during COVID, so the cup is flipped, right? There's nowhere for this ball to go. It hits the pin exactly in the middle and and wedges in between the flag stick and the cup and stays in the hole. And I I I didn't know how to react. I literally I just buried my head and started shaking. I was just like, I've I've been playing this game for 25 years, and this guy playing his third round ever, you know, rockets Warm one into burns. a flag stick and 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 makes it. I was like, fuck this game. Oh, that's <laughs> beautiful. I love it. I was, I was, I was deeply offended. Like I was happy and everything, but I did not react happily. Honestly, I was very yeah. upset. Yeah, I can imagine. That's tough. That's tough. Oh, all right. So in our in our in our last few minutes here, sir, while you've got your global soapbox, what else do you yeah. want to tell us? Yeah, I mean, just like pledge, right? Like pledge or. If you want to learn how to do birdie thon yourself and you like to fundraise yourself, like reach out to me and where I can will... we, where can, where, where can we find you? Yeah, I think I, I don't have social. So you're going to have to find me on LinkedIn at Alex Archer, or I'm going to send this stuff to you, Brian okay. and, and we'll Sean, and you guys are going to link okay. it out, but What's it's a simple Insta? Google form. You guys, you guys find me. Um, you want to reach out to me? I'll help you get it set up in your own local area if you want. But yeah, if you want to pledge, you know, two bucks a birdie, five bucks a birdie, you can put a maximum on it. Um, you know, we'll go out, we'll go earn it. We'll make it, we'll make it worth this. But um, yeah, we're trying to do, trying to do at least 10,000. I spoke with Movember today. They gave me a challenge to get it up to 12 for some reason. I don't know if that's like a magic number for them or something, but um sound like they were, they were trying to push me into 12. So um yeah we want to we want to get it going i think i think five to seven hundred bucks a birdie pledge so about double what we're at right now is going to be the magic number to kind of get us there so reach out a couple bucks we'll go earn it and don't worry you can put a max on it um we will and and honestly in the end i'm going to email you after what you're supposed to pledge and if it needs to be less because that's what you can afford today then do it um anything helps but I think that, and then just talk to your friends, check in on them. You guys know the November thing. Again, for me, uh, healthy men make healthier communities, right? I think that that stuck with me so much. Um, flows in everything, flows in our family life, your communities, like that ripple you create, right? So, um, yeah, this is important to me. I'm just trying to find different ways to, to get involved. And so uh, if this helps you in any way, just let me know. Awesome. I think that's it. Yeah, I think the important thing is Movember is in November, but Movember yeah. isn't one month a year. Yes. Mo- Movember, Movember is every day. You can go out and live that message in January or, or July. Yeah. And, you know, if you, if you're feeling a little inspired, you know, give, 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 give Alex some money now and then do it again, you know, in, in February. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, you know what? Maybe I should be doing birdie thon in July, actually, here in Canada. Yeah. You're right. November is every, every right. Because day. think about it. A, the weather would be better. And yeah. B, if you did it on June 21st, think about how much damn golf you could play. Mm. Mm. I mean, we got lights. 200 holes, I think, is enough for me. I don't yeah. need to do any more than that. You'd be like uh, birdie thon 2.5 and then birdie pond 3.0. Yeah, Christmas in July, yeah, November and June. It. November yeah. and June. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I love it, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me. Love what you guys are doing. Excited for you to hit that 21. So, four, almost, almost there. there. Four episodes left. Awesome, guys. Four episodes left. All right. Thanks, thanks. Alex. Thanks for coming on, guys. pal. All My right, pleasure. See ya. Bye. Oh, that was awesome. Good stuff. He's a good, he's a good dude. I'm, I'm super. I can't believe he's going to Ireland. I know. I'm gonna Damn, tell us about I'm so that. jelly. But uh, yeah, grape or strawberry? <laughs> <laughs> well, since he's not on any socials, though, we're gonna have to get him to send us photos because I I need to see highlights of that trip from yeah, that's a, a fellow good, Canadian. Yeah. Yes. Well, anybody who's that dedicated in in doing that much work, like I'm, I'm so excited to give him 
deserves some good stuff in his life. Yes. Yep. Because he's he's going out and living. I mean, the, the, over 13 years, who knows how big of an impact he's had over people's lives. And that, you know, not even, like I always come back to like, it's not important that it's that you get the credit for it, but it's just, you, you know, that when you do stuff like that, you're making a difference in the world. And that's, that's such an amazing gift and a motivator to keep going and doing it. So, I mean, to get the news out, to come do some coverage on it. I mean, that's amazing. And the golf course to donate the, the greens fees. I mean, yeah, they didn't. Here. They don't have to be that nice. So yeah, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna raise a lot of money. So mm-hmm. and the super. course will get coverage and they'll get exposed oh, for, for that sure. too. Oh, so, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 certainly mutually beneficial for them. End of the season, probably. You know, so yep. if it it's gonna get a lot of play that day, but to go from one person to five people <laughs> over over a period of a year, you know, maybe next year they've got like. The only thing that could slow them down is a sheer of volume people. of people. But then yeah. maybe you get get it going on a bunch of other golf courses. Or I love his idea too, like reach out to them and figure out how to emulate that thing and do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty. Well, another fine episode in the books. Thanks yeah. everyone for listening to episode 17. We'll see Until you next time. Next time. Goodbye now. Later, everybody.